What is going on everyone and welcome to part 14 of our Python with Pandas for Data Analysis tutorial series. In this part what we're going to be talking about is adding a few more data sets. Uh, we're just going to kind of run through them real quickly as far as what we want to add uh, on top of what we're already kind of grabbing. And I think uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll move this mortgage rate down here underneath HPI, whoops, <laughs> underneath HPI benchmark. Uh, and then we can add a few more uh, here. Now, this process now, you can use this basic process to add as many data frames as you want. Biggest thing is you want to make sure uh, that you've got data that's end of month. If the granularity is any less than a month, like if it's yearly or something like that, you're going to be forfeiting a lot of uh, accuracy uh, or at least granularity of data and a lot of data points, which with machine learning, we'd like to have as many data points as possible up to an ex an ex a certain extent, of course, more than like 100,000 rows of data, we wouldn't really want that. Now, uh, so we've got mortgage, 30 year. Uh, that covers basically the interest rate, and that means we've got like two more uh, major factors here, but really just one major factor, and that major factor would be uh, the economy, the overall situation, basically. So there's kind of like two major measurements of the overall economy. One would be the GDP, so the gross domestic product. Uh, the other one would be like the stock market, okay? Um, now in theory, the idea of, of housing is, uh, or real estate is to be, you know, you would have stocks, bonds, and real estate would be like a diverse portfolio. Maybe you throw in some precious metals or something like that, but that would be the idea, right? But a lot, so a lot of people consider real estate to be um, diverse, and the whole point of diversity is so you have usually it's more like a negative covariance, uh, but negatively correlated too is kind of important because you basically you want to be when you're diverse, you have a slow but steady increase in revenue every year. Whereas if you're not diverse, say you're only invested in the S&P 500, you go through as much volatility as the S&P 500 stock market, you know, Dow Jones, whatever goes through. So the reason why people get diversified is to smooth out market fluctuations and also decrease risk, say, you know, the housing market could in theory go down forever, I suppose, or, or whatever, um, or at least for a very long time. So anyway, moving along, we'll, we'll go ahead and grab those two metrics. Now in theory, again, the S&P 500 shouldn't be as valuable as, or should be not necessarily negatively correlated, but have low correlation. Like almost you want to have, you don't necessarily want to have things that are like negatively correlated, but if they had zero correlation, that'd be great. Um, anyway, enough yip yak, yip yak, yip yap plus chit chat. Anyway, yik yak. Anyway, here we go. So define SP500 data. So this one, um, the let's go ahead and let's grab basically we want this one comes with a bunch of columns um, I think what we'll do you could pro, you could type it out if you want um, but we can also just grab this data there's really nothing to be gained I don't think from us not copying and pasting the data from the tutorial I'm not really sure why you would need to type it out so I'm not gonna make everybody type it out so just There'll be a link in the description, and you can go to that code, copy and paste, and at least I'll run over it anyway. So this was to grab the S&P 500 data. The S&P 500 data has open, high, low, close, adjusted, close. So we want the adjusted close. Uh, I don't think it matters with the S&P 500 index. I don't think there's ever a time uh, when there was like a split there. Uh, but adjusted close generally, like for example, uh, Apple did a stock split not too long ago. Uh, and, and what happens when they do a stock split is basically the price got so high that to buy one share you need like a thousand dollars. They don't really like that. So what they do is they say, okay, every share right now is actually two shares. And to buy a new share, it's half the price. Or four, it's now four shares. And to buy a new share, it's 25% of what it used to be. So anyway, stock splits generally do not, aren't adjusted for through history a lot of times. So you have what are called adjusted close or even sometimes you'll have adjusted high, open high low close. That's the whole point of that. Anyway, uh, then we resampled a month because you actually get daily data for the S&P 500. And then we're resampling adjusted close, that name of that column, to the S&P 500 just so it makes sense to us. Cool. In place true. 
Um, next up, this is GDP data. This is, just gives us GDP information uh, for the United States from 1975. Here we do the percent change, of course. Uh, of course, we do the percent change up here too. Then we resample the month. We rename that column from value to GDP. Say the, the data frame is GDP. Boom, done. And then we also grab unemployment. This is just kind of my idea. It was just, you know, hey, like that would probably be an okay metric. It's pretty hard to get uh, a, a home mortgage if you're not employed. So anyway, I thought that might be useful, but who knows. I've never heard anybody reference the unemployment rate being very strongly negatively correlated with the uh, housing price index. But in theory, if people aren't able to get houses, the housing price index will fall because less demand, but who knows. Um, so these are just a few. Now, again, ideally... You might get, you know, a lot. Uh, you, you might be best to have, you know, 50 to 100 possible data points here, and we'll talk about why probably in the next tutorial. Uh, but for machine learning purposes, you might want you'd want to have a lot. Now we still could talk about that pairs trading, where anything that diverges from the HPI, where the HPI is going up, but that housing market is going down, you want to invest in. Um, that's actually probably a pretty good strategy, and that's really simple. And so just don't forget about simplicity really does win out a lot in the markets. So uh, a lot of people really break their backs trying to come up with crazy strategies and stuff. And sometimes the easiest strategy, too, is not even try to game the system. Just just buy and hold. Right? The most tried and true method, it doesn't take any of your time. It's great. But... Um, for data analysis, obviously there's a lot of other reasons why you do data analysis besides investing, right? A lot of data analysis is great for business analysis and analytics, stuff like that. So anyway, you can't really buy and hold that information. Uh, so here's all the data. Now what we can do is we can add it just like we did here. Now, um, so let's say, for example, we could say SP500 equals this SP500 data function. So we could do this copy. And then we'll just say SP500 equals that. Then we can go ahead and do the GDP. Um, now with GDP, we're going to say this is actually US GDP. Probably should rename that function, but we'll just keep it for now. Equals GDP data. And the reason for that is you might actually find that you get each state's GDP and that might have a very high positive correlation to the housing price index. And it might even be a futuristic predictor. So uh, keep that in mind, right? Because that obviously the more money that specific state is bringing in, that means that's more money that's being spread out amongst all the people working in that state. So in theory, that means more money for houses and that would in theory raise up the market. Okay, so you might want to consider doing something like that. Obviously, you know, they, the idea of data analysis and actually like pandas and stuff like that, you'll find a lot of times if you ever kind of dive into this field, it literally is like you're playing in a sandbox. You think of these various ideas and you play them out. And you just see how does it do, you know? Uh, and there's there's a million things that we can do here and I could spend, you know, oh, we could probably have a 100 hour long uh, tutorial series. Um, but part of the fun is just kind of thinking of it yourself or figuring it out. So I'll let you guys do it, but uh, this is, it, you just basically do the same thing, you know, you just make these functions and you go for it. Uh, so anyway, that's GDP, and then we can also grab unemployment. Again, unemployment can be by state, so again, that could be a, a negative correlation factor, so it, it might be wise to get both of those numbers. Um, anyway, uh, so U.S. unemployment, let's say, equals U.S. unemployment. Okay. So now that we have all these values, right, we're joining M30, but actually what we can do is we can join a list of values. So we're going to join M30. We're also going to join uh, US unemployee, and let's spell unemployment right. <laughs> there we go, copy, paste, uh, US GDP, we'll take that. And we also want to bring in the SP500, okay? So uh, now we have all that information. We can do all kinds of stuff really by this point, but we can take, um, well, we can do correlation because we can look at the correlation factors. So no longer, let's see, this is state HPI. Let's just call this, let's just call this HPI, okay? Um, and then we'll do HPI here. Let's see, we, well, we want a few things. Let's go ahead first, we can print out uh, HPI.core. 
Okay, that might be interesting. Um, also, let's print. Let me just print. Let's just print out all of HPI, and then we'll print out core. I just want to look and see what we're dealing with here. Um, I'm trying to think if we would have any not available data from the other data sets, but whatever. Okay, let's see if we spot any not available data here. Yeah, so we have some not available data for this column here. For and that's from uh, obviously after a certain date, it looks like we just don't aren't getting that data. So some of these don't have data beginning at a certain date or after a certain date. Okay, so that's kind of one of your con constraints if you use various of these data sets. So some of them don't go back to 1975 and others don't go all the way through to 2000, you know, 13. I think the oldest sets are 2013 and I'm filming in 2015. But if you find that you're on to a good track, all of this data is available for purchase. Okay, so either through Quandle or like with this stuff, actually you could get the Zillow API. There's other APIs too for housing data. So don't just, you know, you can use this free data really quickly and easily, but if you actually find that you're onto something, there's, someone will sell you the data <laughs> if you can't find it any other way. Um, so anyway, yeah, we'll see. GDP just doesn't start until later. We don't, I don't know when, but maybe 2000 or something. And then so what we could do is we already know we can just drop all NA. So we could do something like this. We could say hpi.drop NA in, play, in place equals true. And um, it takes a little bit because we're pulling all those functions. So uh, as you might be able to guess, what we ought to do is, um, wow. Uh, Let's see, I'm trying to see, okay, so this data set, right, it starts at 1990, so we're losing, you know, a, a decent amount of time here, about 15 years, so, and we're losing that because of GDP, so that's a perfect example of like, well, we just don't have GDP data going back to 1975, at least through the data that we found, right, but I guarantee you, you can find some GDP data that goes back to 1975. The, the real crux, the hard part will be finding monthly GDP data going back that far, but I'm sure you can find it. So anyway, so we'll drop NA. We're going to do that because um, we're going to feed this through a machine learning classifier, and I'm not really too interested in, in replacing 15 years with you know negative 99,000. So finally, the last thing that we're going to do in this, this specific tutorial is the following. We want to go ahead and hpi.2pickle, hpi.pickle, all right? Send that to pickle, run it, and make sure it actually goes to the pickle, but uh, it should. And once you're done there, now you're ready to continue on to the next tutorial. And the next tutorial will be incorporating scikit-learn. You can already install it if you want, but we'll talk about it. It's just pip install sklearn. Um, and then, and what that allows us to do is we've got a bunch of pre-made machine learning classifiers for us, and we can just pump this data through very easily. You don't need to know a thing about machine learning uh, and classification. I'll show it in the next tutorial, actually. Um, you, know, you can follow a very nice and easy flow chart to figure out what classifier you want to use. So it's really easy. Don't let machine learning scare you off because uh, anybody can do it. Uh, I'm not a machine learning guru, and I was able to figure out and use machine learning in like a day. So it's really simple. So anyways, that's what you guys have to look forward to. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Till next time.